time it. Rules it about with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Floyd Mayweather Chest and Juco fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using those unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. And first to enter the ring will be Justin Juco. We mentioned his colorful genesis on the sport. Born and raised in Uganda, the nation that produced fighters like Cornelius Bose Edwards, who's something of a mentor to Juco, and John the Beast Mugabe. But he came all the way to all the way here to America and began his professional boxing career eight years ago in Las Vegas before going off to fight at other far-flung points around the globe. You know, given the circumstance, he is a credible fill-in, but there have been some kind of a low-grade dissatisfaction with the fact that he has a title fight after having lost a title fight in his last fight. Some people thought that this should be considered a non-title fight, but the promoter has a contract with the hotel for two title fights. We have two title fights. And Juco, a former sparring partner of Jeff Mayweather, who is uh, one of Floyd Mayweather's illustrious uncles from the sport, both Jeff and Roger, his uncles with long professional boxing backgrounds. Juco sparred with Jeff, and therefore Floyd knows him pretty well, knows what he can do. His father, he told us, was an engineer back in Uganda. He himself has had one year of college. And he, and he told us that he's a prince in Uganda, a real prince, not like Prince Nassim Hamed, who's a publicity prince. This one comes from a royal family. Here's his record. And he went seven and a half years between losses, fighting guys whose names you haven't heard, but nevertheless winning all the time between 1991 and early this year. So the over, overall record, 33 wins, two losses, one draw, 25 KOs. Looks highly credible on paper. Again, the question, what kind of fighters was he fighting? And now the Mayweather clan from Grand Rapids. You know, Jim, Floyd Mayweather is a wonderful talent. Looks like he's going to be recognized as a great fighter someday. And I agree with George. It's good for him to have the ambition to want to be great and to want to earn the kind of money that recognized, experienced fighters make. But he's also been complaining about the fact that his promoter didn't buy him a new car, uh, about is suggesting he might take a year off. Uh, he's just got to keep fighting. And when they build those new casinos in the Detroit area, and he's from Michigan, he might be able to build the base of support that will get him those mega fights and mega dollars. This is the first time in Floyd's 21-fight professional career that he's had to fight a last-second throw-in. But he says, no problem. I had hundreds of amateur fights, and in the amateurs, you never know. You just go out and fight the guy in front of you. And once again, you know, many fighters, athletes believe that because they are as good as an athlete or better who is making a lot of money that they automatically should get as much money because they don't understand the, the marketing and business side of the sport in which the amount of money you get is directly related to the number of tushes that you can put in seats. And hey, the solution is just keep winning, which Floyd has done beautifully so far. The world title won with his victory over Gennaro Hernandez last year, then the knockout of Angel Man Freddy. That surprised a lot of people. Another fight in between, getting ready for this one. Overall, he's 20 and 0 with 15 KOs. So you've seen the fighters walk in here at the Mandalay Bay Hotel. What do you think? Is that walk in too long? Should we try to shorten it for the upcoming big fights here? While you're watching this upcoming bout, you can log on to www.hbo.com slash boxing to chat, score each round of tonight's action, and vote on whether you want to see the walk-ins shortened at the Mandalay Bay. Now let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, and good evening, and welcome to the fabulous Mandalay Bay Resort Casino here in Las Vegas, Nevada, where tonight, 
Bob Arum's top rank incorporated the Las Vegas Hilton and the Mandalay Bay along with your undisputed undefeated king of beers Budweiser this buds for you present an evening of world championship boxing sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission and the World Boxing Council before we continue on behalf of top rank and court incorporated belated birthday wishes to the greatest matchmaker in boxing history Hall of Famer Teddy Brenner the officials appointed for this bout at ringside are WBC supervisor Mr. Frank Quill the three judges scoring the contest on a 10-point must system will be Anek Hamtamkan, John Keane and Daniel Fondavila and your referee in charge of the action when the bell rings Mitch Halpern and now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Mandalay Bay Resort Casino of Las Vegas, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black, red, and yellow, and weighing 130 pounds. His professional record, an excellent one. 33 victories with 25 knockouts, only two defeats and one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, from Masaka, Uganda, here is the challenger, the Ugandan destroyer, Justin Juko. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trimmed with silver, Weighing in at 130 pounds also. His professional record stands at a perfect 20 victories without a defeat, including 15 knockouts. And already at this early stage of his career, he is regarded among the best as pound for pound, one of the best in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, from Grand Rapids, Michigan, presenting the reigning and defending undefeated WBC super featherweight champion of the world pretty boy Floyd Mayweather all right gentlemen let's keep this clean obey my commands at all times touch gloves good luck given all the violence that's been going on in the world since we last did a prize fight. It's nice to be just doing a little old boxing match. Justin Juco was to be trained tonight by the respected trainer Freddie Roach. But Freddie Roach has another assignment simultaneously working down in Mexico with Johnny Tapia, who's preparing for a championship fight this morning. Freddie Roach worked Tappy out and then apparently missed his scheduled flight here to Las Vegas. So Juco wor uh, works tonight without the trainer he's accustomed to in his corner. Ruben Gomez, the cut man, becomes the chief second in that corner. And George, that's got to be discouraging. It's, it's awful difficult because you don't know. You, you need your motor to kind of crank it, crank things up. You don't have the trainer. You don't know when, what, and how to get started. So he's going to have some problems at first, especially in the first couple of rounds. If the fight can last that long with this left jab, keep popping yeah, it out of here. Mayweather is just really throwing a hard jab at Juco. Landed five or six already. And Juco, who has been throwing in previous bouts upwards of 70 or 80 punches per round, won't approach that output number in this first round against Floyd Mayweather. It's hard to throw a lot of punches against a super fast opponent like Floyd. Florida is has a convenience. He loves to watch punches pass him by. Make you miss. Can't seem to function without it. Hard left hook. You can see that Floyd Mayweather can do so much off the front foot. He jabs beautifully. He has a quick lead left hook. He can follow with right hands over the top. If Juco want to win this boxing match, he's kind of got he's got to get wild a little bit. You can't just stay right there on the standard boxing. Move your right foot a little closer to your left foot so that you can hit him with your right hand. Sometimes if the right foot is too far away, it's going to make you farther away when you throw the right hand. That was a good left jab to the chest. Good Juco. Count, counter left hand by Juco. Just misses with the right hand over the top. Juco looks quite relaxed in there. 
and is starting to get off a little bit now in the second half of the round. You have a fight already planned. You go into training camp for a tough fight. Then all of a sudden, you switch the opponents. That can really throw you off. So Mayweather's having to adjust a little bit, too. Mayweather said he was in no way surprised that Gregorio Vargas dropped out of the bout. He said that when first he saw Vargas in a publicity uh, outing for the bout a couple of weeks ago, Vargas looked to him like he weighed 160 pounds. And he was thinking, how is this guy possibly going to fight me? Vargas was thinking the same thing at that time, guaranteed. <laughs> How am I going to fight this guy? Mayweather said at first he didn't even realize that Vargas was the opponent because he looked in no way like what an opponent for a 130-pound world championship fight ought to look at or look like that short a period of time before the bout. Cautious, workmanlike first round for Floyd Mayweather Jr. Justin Juco. Throwing about half as many punches as has been the case against lesser opponents. And Lloyd gets ready to listen to his dad, Lloyd Mayweather Sr. Just keep, just don't, don't even worry about it. Just keep doing what you're doing. Just kill him with a right hand every now and then. Just keep doing what you're doing. Sometimes you hit him with the right hand, come up with the left hook. Beat me. Okay? Okay. You're looking good. You can drop that right hand on top of him, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't reach for him, though. No. Mm. Yeah, beautiful job, Justin. Let's use it, okay? Let's not wait. Let's go. Let's go. It's gonna work. Go. All right. Miles Teaching. Who banned Gomez? Talking to Justin Juco. Juco showed perhaps a little bit too much respect for Mayweather in the first round. Wanted to see what he had, and so was hardly throwing that left jab. Let's see if he steps it up here. Mayweather with a quick snapping overhand right to start out round number two. And already looking, he's just waiting for the jab to come over the top. Mayweather. Juco pounding to the body with a wide right. Mayweather's trying to look to get in the pocket now. He's been outside enough. Now he would like to slip the punches and be a little closer to his opponent. That's what he's doing now. He's not jumping far away now. Little left hook to the body by Mayweather landed. That's when you can roll the punches when you stay in the pocket. When you jump far away. The guy can't hit you, but nor can you return the punch. And as you start to get closer to your opponent and try to set up farther inside, it's always good to pound him to the body a couple of times to take the aggressiveness away. Now, he's going to be very smart with body punches because he's fighting a quick guy. You reach down there too much, and he can get something out of something. So he'll use them selectively. Selectively, that's a great way to say it. Now, he's looking at just to get closer, closer, closer. When you do something, you gotta look at your opponent's shoulders. Now, Juco's got some big shoulders for that weight class. It's not like he's not gonna have something when he throws a punch. He's also showing more defense than we were led to believe. Uh, according to Jeff Mayweather, uh, who had sparred so often with him, that he had uh, told Floyd that he throws so many hard punches that you can time him and he does have a lot of holes. So Juco here is perhaps uh, aware of that relationship between the uncle and the uh, nephew, and he is throwing fewer punches and being more resourceful. And maybe he's pacing himself that way, too, because he faded in the late rounds of his preceding bout, an 11th round TKO loss to Antonio Hernandez, in which Juco was leading on two scorecards at the time at which the fight was stopped. And so it's in his best interest to try to save something for the later rounds against Floyd, who, for his part, believes, based on what Uncle Jeff and Floyd Sr. have told him, that Juco will fade after a faster early pace. I think what has happened is like a guy duck hunting. You're just waiting. You gotta wait. You can't hit anything. And you find yourself waiting too long. This guy's so fast, dynamic. Do you think you're gonna miss? I'm gonna miss this, so I'm just gonna wait for a good shot.
Right hand over the top lands for Juco. Second round, not a bad one for the Ugandan Las Vegas challenger, Justin Juco. Meanwhile, Oscar De La Hoya with a little dance action in his dressing room. Oscar with a uh, recording contract and singing lessons, but that's a different kind of music than what he's working with right here. And in the background, the smiling, clapping trainer, Robert Alcazar, seemingly moving ever closer to full control of the fighter's training regimen, as opposed to his situation in the past where he's had to work with you know, Clancy, with Emmanuel Stewart, with Jesus You're Rivero, with a variety of others You're who've been brought in to help De La Hoya. This on his mind. Don't well, Gil Clancy is with him tonight. There have been verified reports that this will be Clancy's last appearance, which Oscar told us was not necessarily true. But Oscar I did make it clear. It is. Yeah, Oscar did make it clear that, in his view, certain people are leaving the Deloya boat after this particular voyage. Part of his new transformation, he says he wants to cut cut his team down from about 20 to four. Comedy we'll box numbers showing that Justin Juco is getting a little bit more comfortable. He only landed three punches in the first round, but landed 11 in round two and actually threw four more punches than Floyd Mayweather. Floyd doesn't try to shoot, throw 65, 70 punches around. He's pretty measured in his output. He's, he's seen the rewards of being a puncher, so he's, he believes that he can take you out any time. Good, good punch by Mayweather, just a little bit high. More and more, it looks as though that quick counter right hand over the top of Juco's jab is the primary item in the recipe for tonight. Kind of loads you a little bit. He doesn't do anything for a couple of minutes, and all of a sudden he unloads with something that shocks you. Makes you think you're slipping, but you're not slipping, you're hurt. <laughs> Mayweather blocking or partially blocking all of Juco's shots here. Juco glancingly lands the right hand over the top, but now he managed May to do a lot of damage, and then Mayweather lands the right hand counter. Mayweather's found a pocket now. He's not stepping and jumping back. He's getting closer. And that's what you don't want him want to happen. A Juco is best start moving and jabbing a bit more to throw him off rhythm. Ry uh, rhythm. And you saw Floyd step right up in Juco's face, wait for him to throw the left hand, and then pop the right. Yeah, well, the when top. that's happening to you, Juco now should start jabbing and moving out of the way, make him reestablish the pocket somewhere else. And step back a little bit and make him change. Juco can very well win. He got to think, he, I can win this thing, too. This is an opportunity. Sometimes you can get into a fight with a fast, classy guy like Mayweather and start looking just like the audience, forgetting that you came here to win. Again, the right hand counter over the top. Mayweather dropping and splitting his hands from time to time, try to invite Juco to come in. Juco best start moving around, do something, just to change things up, make Mayweather reach at him a little bit and miss. And that's exactly what Jeff Mayweather told his nephew that Juco would do. That he would do the same thing round after round, and he would give Floyd a chance to time him. First time that you act like you really wanted to fight. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Up until that time, you had not been doing anything. Mm -hmm. Double up on the jab, right hand, left hook. Put your punches together, son. Mm -hmm. No sense in waiting. Hey, this is do or die. This is championship time. You understand? Mm -hmm. Let's get. To, let's take care of business, okay? Mm -hmm. All right then. Mm -hmm. No problem. Keep your hands up. Mm -hmm. He faints you. You fade him back. It's clear that Mayweather has been looking to hurt. You go with the right hand. He's been throwing it over that left, whether or not Juco tosses it out there or not. 
but so far he's unable to land, catch Juco while he's on the way in, and so the punches have not had the desired impact. Harold, how do you have it through three? Jim, three to nothing, 30 to 27, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Jim, I want to tell you something. What I love about him is, you know, we always talk about ring generalship. In the first round, he had, uh, Mayweather had Justin Juco looking for left jab, and then he gave him that variety. He started throwing right-hand leads. In the second round, he switched to southpaw. He threw left hooks underneath. So he's showing Juco such a variety. Juco just doesn't know what to look for, and that's great gen ring generalship. The judges have to consider that. Mayweather landing a little left hook inside. Missing with the right as Juco backed away. Now Juco getting more aggressive and Floyd gets a chance to crack him. Two right hands. That last right hand might have gotten Mayweather's attention a little bit, but it also gets him riled up to land his own. You gotta learn in this weight division, especially Mayweather's, you just can't let those guys hit on you, especially around your side and your body. Fight goes on five, six rounds. The energy that you thought you had has already evaporated. He's allowing him to jab him in his chest now. No, you don't need that. Jab in the chest, jab in the belly. Good hard digging left hook to the body by Mayweather. Juco comes back with a right hand shot to the body himself. Mitch Halpern says keep him up. Right uppercut, just a tiny bit short. Like everything that Mayweather's doing, but allowing himself to be hit around the side, the chest. It's not good. Like that. It looks as almost though he's waiting for Juco to do something so he can counter it. In the meantime, he sometimes allows himself to be hit. If the fight goes beyond six rounds, then all those little punches count up. Juco is solid. He's not the best, but he's solid at what he does. Yeah, you know, but Mayweather has got so much talent, you know, so much zest for the game. Um, it's just a question of how he's going to win this fight rather than whether he is going to win this fight. But when you're a solid fighter like that, you get thrown out four or five rounds. You can really pick up things in the six, seven round. That's where you beat talented fighters. Let them use their talent against themselves. Tonight on HBO's World Championship Boxing, you're looking at two of the very best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the sport, Floyd Mayweather in this bout, Oscar De La Hoya, later to come this evening. In the next two weeks, more of the same. Next week, from San Juan, Puerto Rico, De La Hoya's welterweight foil, Felix Trinidad in a title defense against Hugo Pineda of Colombia. And then on June 5, Roy Jones against Reggie Johnson. The winner of that bout will be the unified light heavyweight champion, the holder of all three significant belts. And of course, both Trinidad and Roy Jones figure along with Mayweather and De La Hoya in the pound for pound sweepstakes, Larry. Yeah, we're gonna have four of the best fighters in the world pound for pound within a two week period in no particular order. Here are the top five, Bernard Hopkins in there, surprisingly to many, but because he's been the dominant middleweight of the last half of the 90s. And in the lower weight divisions, Mayweather, Mark Johnson, Morales, Hamed, all very good fighters. Two or three of them may emerge as great fighters. Copy box numbers for round number four. Floyd Mayweather landing nearly 60%, 22 out of 38. But Justin Juco much more active throwing 61 punches and landing 21. So Juco's beginning to make a fight of it now against Mayweather as we go to the fifth. Juco jumps off his corner. His eyes are not dim. Spirit is still up. That's not good for Mayweather. You know, I, looking at him, I can't help but think of his countryman, John Mugabe, who gave Marvin Hagler one of the best fights of Hagler's career here in Las Vegas back in the 80s. Uh, if they've come over from Uganda and they've made a professional life here, they must have a lot of toughness to begin with.
After you've devastated a guy in the fashion Mayweather has done early on, his eyes should be looking to the floor. He should be watching his corner men to see how he feels, but that has not happened to him. Well, this is a terrific opportunity. First of all, he's making more money by far than he's ever made in his life, a reported $75,000. And it's a terrific opportunity to get exposure, and if he makes a good showing, we could see him again. So he's got all the motivation in the world, and if he loses, well, he's taking the fight on three days' notice. Some of the people who worked to help Gregorio Vargas get the chance to fight in this fight were infuriated that he chose to drop out on such short notice, and one of them even piped up and said, I hope he never gets a chance like that again. Meanwhile, I think the consensus of experts at ringside would be that Juco is probably a tougher opponent for Mayweather at this moment in his career. This fight Vargas has turned. I want you to know this fight has turned already while we were doing all the talking. Yep. It's a different fight already. Mayweather's Juco's got getting comfortable. Yeah. And he's been able to get in some of those shots, and it's because of the earlier body punching. But now Floyd Mayweather rocks him back with a right hand. And Floyd, who was able to finish against Angel Manfredi with the help of a questionable stoppage down in Florida, looks for a moment to try to do the same against Juco, but then goes back into the pocket and gets back to business. He's, a, he's got to understand, Mayweather, if you get an opportunity to get a knockout, you better do it. You can't play with these guys. Juco better take advantage of his opportunity and may not come back in the next two rounds. So you'd like to see both men be more aggressive right now. Yeah, Juco especially. Mayweather throws his right hand and does not come back with the left hook, and he gets caught every time. Justin Juco seems to be saying to Floyd Mayweather, if you're going to let me hit you in the body, I'm taking advantage of that. I will accept that invitation. He's, a, he's able to get close and close with that right hand on a... Mayweather already. Mayweather doing a little bit of clowning and mugging for Juco in there. But that was not a bad round for the former Ugandan fighter who now lives right here in Vegas. Every round is easy. Every round is easy, baby. It's your money, it's your show. Okay? You look real good that round. One thing I look for, one thing I need from you, man, to bring a left hook back. That's all I'm asking for. Trying, what is it, man? You ain't trying. You ain't doing it yet. How you trying? You got to you gotta throw it for me. You know you're trying. You know what you're doing, baby? You're pushing too much. You're pushing too much. You let him get off. This guy, this not, guy, not hit you. Pressure. You let him get away. Yep. You, put out you let him get away. Daddy says, no, you ain't. We'll look for more left hooks. And there's something to hear a fighter say, no, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like me at home. Now, when Mayweather waits around and does nothing, this guy takes advantage of him. He'll take anything. He'll take that little jab to the body if Mayweather keeps making it available. Yeah, and it helps. It helps. Juco doubling and tripling up on the jabs now. Mayweather still conscious of trying to land right-hand shots across the top of Juco's left. He is the memory of what his dad said to come back with the hook, he did it this time. There it yeah. was, to the body. You got to come back, finish up with the hook to get yourself back in position, number one. And then secondly, if, if the other shot has hurt the guy, the other this would finish him off, the left hook. Fight a fight a style like Mayweather, you can't go to a party ever. Kept in training year of, all year round. Well, the way you, live in you cannot be, you cannot have a party in your life until your career is over. Go, Larry. When you live in Las Vegas, that's not very likely, George. It better be. Well, Mayweather's father spent three and a half years in prison for drug possession. But virtually everybody around Floyd agrees that when Floyd Sr. came out of the big house last year, right hand, that stabilized Mayweather's personal life and kept him from messing around too much. No, so there's a solid, stable community in Las Vegas. The people here are real solid. Mayweather landing more power shots in this round. 
and looking as though he's beginning to try to break Juco down technically. Now it seems to be he's enforced his wheel on Juco now. He's turned the tide again. Now Juco is waiting while Mayweather is waiting. Beforehand, when Mayweather would wait, he would do something. Four shots to the body by Juco. This is when you say to yourself, when you're fighting someone like Mayweather, man, strictly man, <laughs> nothing else. Say that in the middle of the fight, dude. Right at the end of six. Here's Obakar. Struck down a serpent at the epitome of destruction. Just touched the hem of his garment. And turn of the jets I come to claim the works of art. Let loose the way the ants that's keeping them player haters in a spell. The flesh shows the evidence of being released from the dungeon of hell. The Fight motor time. city. Flush right hand by Mayweather. Juco is a tough hombre. And in that round, Juco released 80 punches. So he has now arrived at the level of punch output that he put forth in his last several bouts coming in here. It's one thing to throw 80 punches around against Antonio Hernandez or the lesser opponents Juco was fighting before, yet another to try it against a guy like Floyd Mayweather. Harold, how do you have it through six? <laughs> Jim, five rounds to one. 59, 55, Floyd Mayweather. Jim, I want to tell you something. Justin Juco has never seen a fighter with a variety of punches like this kid has had, and that's what's killing him. Floyd lands, and he lands solid. You don't know what he's going to throw. Beautiful double left hooks. Right hand leads it. Just, I mean, that right hand lead in the sixth round nearly took the guy's head off. Incidentally, Mitch Halper rightly has won Justin Juco four times already for low blows. None of which seem to be terribly low. No, I didn't think so either. Juco, if you want to win this fight, man, you got to get active. You just can't say I went the distance with Mayweather and think you earned something. Juco misses with a right over the top, and Mayweather comes back with a right uppercut. And that sets off this flurry. takes a lot of condition because he still has the snap in his left jab bounces whenever he wants and he's taking a lot of body shots and his eyes are his best weapon George he's 22 years old yeah but I know a lot of guys he's 19 can't do this age is not it's not about age Watch it stands right on the ball, like on your mark. That's what you want a fighter to do. You say to himself, you get on your mark, just like a track runner. On your mark, get set. He's doing it. He's standing right on the mark. And right hand leads yeah. and left hooks have backed Juco up and put Floyd totally in command of this seventh round. Now Juco lands a big right hand over the top, and Floyd sticks his tongue out at him. And it hurt, that's why. He baited him into that punch. He was saying, come on, come on. Left himself open, caught a straight right hand. Juco is, is, may not be the best one, but he's solid. He's not going to disappear and well, stop George, throwing punches. Second win. 
Now, 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 you, now you begin to come back with that hook. That's what I want. You get that thing over with now. You ain't hitting him buckling with one shot. You're buckling it and KOing it with the next. You're grouping him up. You're grouping him up now. That's what we want. Justin, right here. Justin, we got you throw punches, okay? Yeah. See, he didn't like it. When you hurt him, he didn't like it. He yeah. back right away, okay? okay? You put the pressure on this guy, hey. Yeah. We got to take the title from him, okay? okay? okay. The only way we're going to do it is by going after him. Mayweather has won some high praises. Juco doesn't seem to be that impressed. Comes back with a clean right hand. And later in the round, he tries it again and comes up Go. again. Mayweather took the punches well. But after throwing 80 punches in the preceding round, Juco dropped only 53 punches in that one. No doubt the product of getting hit by all those hard right hands and left hooks that Floyd Mayweather delivered. You know what I'm wondering is where's Mayweather landed some beautiful left jabs early in the fight. He's gone back to it right now, but it hasn't been there. I mean, he could use that left hand and work off that, but he doesn't seem to like to do that. No, he's not a jabber. He has a good jab, but that's not his thing. He likes to get real close, watch the guy drop his hand or so, and then take advantage of it. Because, as you said, George, he has those amazing eyes and, quick, right. and quick reflexes. Some guys just throw shots whether they can see it or not. Or they do it because they're trained to do it. But this guy actually watches it like an airline pilot. Or one of those uh, bummers. Guys flying those fast planes. Juco can still pull this thing out. All you have to do is go to the body for a while, get this guy to drop his hands and relax, and then go back up upstairs for a while. I love your optimism, George. Because he's, he's landing the body punches to do much, to do as much. Well, maybe you're right. But I mean, we're really going to get to the last third of the fight. Floyd Mayweather putting a little more mustard on his power punches now and rounding them out a little more as he tries to fulfill his father's prophecy that he can get you go out of there. Mayweather's one of those guys, you know, they, they sign him to a football contract early on as a rookie. Then they don't give him what they want right off. They're going to have trouble later on. So this guy, he's a star. You better pay him. If you tuned in late, you've read your program guide and you're wondering which guy is Gregorio Vargas. He isn't here. He dropped out of the fight on Wednesday and the gentleman in the striped trunks is Justin Juco, a brave last minute throw in who is fighting well and giving Floyd Mayweather some competition, albeit falling short of winning rounds against Mayweather, who is dominating the bout. This is the way you, the opportunity that you want to fight a great champion. When he expects you not to be in shape, you take the fight on a short notice, and you get in there and upset it. That's what every fighter wants. Well, Juco has already won his battle for at least some respect, taking a fight, you know, 72 hours before the fight, hanging in there with an extraordinarily gifted fighter. Give and take flurry to end the eighth. Justin Juco isn't gone yet. There's some juice. Join us Tuesday at 10 o'clock Eastern and Pacific for the premiere of Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel. Some of the stories will feature Golden Gloves boxing champion Elvir Mariki, a Balkan immigrant whose father and sister have returned to Albania in their fight against the Serbs. A look at hockey goons in which we'll follow on and off the ice two paid enforcers, Tony Twist and Stu Grimson, plus a report on a sports riot and on the violent violence that sometimes occurs when normal law-abiding citizens go on a wild rampage after a major sports event. Real sports, where nothing is out of bounds. He's walking on the back of his heel. He's walking on the back of his heel. Will you get him hurt? Keep jumping on him. Okay, seconds out. Real one time, his mouthpiece. Right cheek. Well, we're seeing a, an abundant 
display of Mayweather's many talents, but he hasn't been able to dramatize them with a stunning victory here or in, in, in putting on some drama and theater for us. You think that hurts him at all, George? Uh, it really doesn't help things. You want to go out there, you say you want a lot of money, you say you deserve it, give us something. Listen, tonight, give us a knockout, a clean knockout, and maybe we'll buy a stock. Well, he certainly gave the boxing public everything it could have hoped for in his tremendous performance against Gennaro Hernandez and his stunning second-round TKO of Angel Manfredi. But then he went the distance with Carlos Rios in a tune-up bout prior to this one, and now there's every chance he might go the distance with Justin Juco. You know, there's, there's absolutely nothing... Juco is hurt by that right hand. Just as I said, it might go the distance, of course. Floyd hammers Juco with two right hands. And Mitch Halpern counts. And Juco doesn't look like he wants to go on. He doesn't know where he is. It happens like that, Larry. So once again, he gave it to him. Mayweather trumped us, just as we were speculating. I'm buying that stock. On whether he could put a dramatic ending to this fight with a flourish just as i said a knockout is certain here and has been inevitable from the beginning of the fight <laughs> now that's when you want to go by the stock this guy's a star i'm telling you sign him up pay him now or pay for it later 15 seconds ago george you were wondering whether you, whether it was a worthwhile stock and here you are you you're in the bull market that's right <laughs> that's what knockouts goes. do that's what knockouts that's do that's the way it goes a knockout will do it every time it only takes 15 seconds to knock a man out if you land the right punches and he did punches is the correct way to say it boom plural he kept throwing another look at floyd mayweather jr's right hands that ended the bout that was the second of two thunderous right hands one Two. That he didn't recover from right there. Yeah. Three. That's it. So there were three right hands, did it? And now uh, one of the women in the Mayweather entourage has collapsed in the ring. It's poor mother. I'm not sure whether that's Floyd Jr.'s mother or grandmother. I think maybe it's the grandmother. I think that might be his grandmother. She should lay there for a second. Maybe too much excitement. She's been seated at ringside right behind us, enjoying the bout with the other members of her family. She had a lot of her sons to be boxers. And now all of a sudden she has a grandson to embrace and she wanna enjoy it. And that's what happens. And you saw Floyd Mayweather Sr. looking on. I'm strongly of the opinion, without knowing for a thousand percent certainty or hundred percent certainty, I'm strongly of the opinion this is that man, Floyd Mayweather's mother. No doubt about and it. And Floyd Jr.'s grandmother who was on the floor. You know that yeah, for a fact. I know that for a fact. Yeah. Her name is Bernice. And let's hope that all goes well. Obviously, her lips are moving and her fingers are on one side. So it would appear that she's talking. And of course, Dr. Flip Homansky is right there at her side. There's no shortage of medical care here. And obviously, there's a paramedical setup in case of an injury to fighters or something else of that nature. And you can see that she's going to be treated immediately here in the ring. So as Bernice Mayweather is dealt with, um, and we'll monitor that situation for you, a couple of final comments on the bout. Take a look at uh, punch stat numbers, and you can see that uh, Justin Juco threw 103 more punches, but landed 62 fewer as Floyd Mayweather Jr., with his enormous hand speed, was able to land at a 54% rate. You got that kind of speed.
And there is uh, Floyd Jr. Making certain that his grandmother's okay. You can see uh, the emotion in his eyes. Patiently waiting to give you the official particulars on the TKO. And uh, now Bernice stands up. So far, so good. Okay. I'm just seeing if she took you okay. Lipomansky being very careful with her. Someone should embrace her. There's her son. Who better to help her down the steps, huh? The old poem is, poem is lover, as when young, though old, feeble, and great, for you'll never miss the mother's love until she's buried beneath the clay. This is the time to love her. There's nothing wrong with a mother fainting in the ring. <laughs> Enjoy that. A scary moment for all concerned, but it looks like everything's going to be okay. And now let's go up to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on Floyd's victory. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mitch Halpern reaches the count of 10 at 1 minute, 20 seconds of round number 9. The winner by knockout victory, still the undefeated WBC super featherweight champion of the world, pretty boy Floyd Mayweather. And Larry Merchant now in the ring with the winner. Thank you very much, fellas. Uh, Floyd, can you tell us, uh, did you say something to your grandmother, or did she say something to you, or um, she, she was just overtaken with excitement? Well, first of all, I want to thank God for this, this victory, and I want to say that um, my grandma just was, was a little anxious tonight um, to get in here and see me. She was happy that I got the victory. So I guess she um, she lost, lost a little oxygen, you know. So um, she, she's going to be okay. Just hyperventilated a little just bit a there. Little bit. It's kind of hot in here. It's cool. <laughs> You put a lot of pressure on yourself because you feel you're a great fighter, not getting all the recognition you deserve. Do you feel you have to close the show the way you finally were able to close it tonight? I mean, Justin Juco was a very tough opponent. He came in at the last minute, but he was already training for a tough fight. But um, I took my time, stayed, stayed focused, kept my composure, listened to my corner, and um, I got the job done. Let's take a look. Your right hand seemed to be the punch that you were, you felt you could land all the time tonight. Tell us about it. What were you looking for? I was just, I was just using a pull counter, and um, the shot was landing all night. I was taking my time, you know, using my shoulder, landing, you know, landing smart shots. Take were you surprised that that he was as tough as he was, given the short notice he took this fight on? But Ju Juco was already training for a fight. He's gonna fight a week after this. I knew he was gonna be a tough opponent, but um, I just took my time, listened to my corner. I just want to say I'm. Happy to be fighting on HBO. I want to thank Top Rank and everybody for giving me this opportunity to fight one of the best out there. Thank you very much, Floyd. Thank you. We'll be seeing you soon. Jim? 